Hi everyone, um, <clears throat> this is Vinod and uh, really thank you um, everyone for joining this session today. Uh, today I'm going to talk more about Azure Data Engineering training and uh, <clears throat> myself I'm uh, working as data architect in one of the NMNCs in Hyderabad and um, I'm having around 16 years of experience in the data engineering field and on Azure I'm working from past few years actually. Also, um, I've been uh, training people. Um, I was associated uh, with some of the institutes before um, uh, to train the people. And I'm training independently also. This is going to be independent, independent training that I'm going to um, <coughs> walk you through. Everything I'm going to take care of uh, the training stuff. So, um, Today, so we talk more about the Azure Data Engineering stuff. So I will uh, explain few things uh, which will be helpful for uh, how this course is layout, uh, laid out and uh, in what ways it's going to help you, why we need to learn a lot of technologies in the modern data era. Let's say uh, whenever we uh, talk about uh, data engineering, earlier, we used to mainly talk about ETL. ETL is extraction of the data, okay, Trans transformation of the data and load the data. So this used to be the case a uh, few years before. Now that we got um, like a lot of cloud technologies in place and um, we have to learn a lot of technologies, we need to know how to organize the data, how to organize the data, how to uh, use different kinds of tools for solving different problems, right? And also, we need to know new <coughs> programming languages, like uh, apart from SQL is the existing uh, programming language which is there from many years, and we also need to learn Python, PySpark a little bit also. So that you will you'll get to know which tool to use, which technology to, to, to use to solve what kind of problems. So together this constitutes the data engineering. Earlier it used to be just use one tool, just extract the data and load the data. Okay. So nowadays, it's not the case. We need to know a lot of tools, how uh, data is going to be stored, how you are going to extract the data, uh, you are going to use uh, different tools and technologies. So you will be called as a data engineer rather than an ETL engineer. Okay, why we need to extract the data, right? So why we need to do all this stuff? I have a, let's say I'm using a mobile application, let's say a bank application, okay? So in the back end, any application that you are trying to use, there will be a backend that is the database wherein the data will get stored, okay? So from this also you can do reporting from this, like why do we need reporting, right? So we need reporting to find out insights of what data has been generated. Let's say you went to bank, you did some 100 transactions, like you spend your credit card, debit card, UPI payments, everything. So to want to know, you want to know like how much money I have spent yesterday. So for that, you need a report, okay? So you can connect to this database and get the reports. But just remember, whenever you were trying to read the data from application, it, it's going to put a deadlock, right? You are not going to, uh, means, what do I mean by a deadlock? Somebody is trying to write the data and you are going to read the data. There could be some uh, situations wherein it may you end up or you trying to do something they try to do something and it end up crashing the application so that's the reason everyone they will move the data to another kind of database that is the <coughs> OLAP databases OLAP is analytical processing databases this is the OLTP databases this is for transactions any online application that you take, those are called the transaction application. And from there, you are going to move the data into analytical processing databases. Okay. This is how you are going to move the data. In between, whatever you do is the 
transformations. So here you are going to build the application in such a way that it works faster for insertion and updation of the data. Here you are going to design the database in such a way that it works faster for reading the data. Okay, this is just a uh, <laughs> like overview of what is an ETL, why we need an ETL. So to avoid any crashes of the application, you are going to move the data from one place to another place. Let's say you are working for a company wherein they have some 500 applications, right? If they have a 500 applications, I cannot tap into each application. Okay, there are companies where they use 500 applications, right? So I, I cannot tap into each application. So what we'll do? we will extract the data from all these 500 applications and then we'll move the data into a <coughs> another location which could be a database or uh, nowadays i will also talk about how it evolved why we need to learn uh, why we are using data lakes and everything okay we'll move the data into the databases so over a period of time we have a lot of volume, the velocity of the data. What do I mean by the velocity of the data? So every minute, okay, every hour, every minute, like Amazon is able to make around $83,000 of money all over the world, right? So every minute, every hour, like there, are, there is around 72 hours of YouTube video is getting um, generated. So like this, if you could see the volume velocity, there is lot of volume that is uh, volume of data that is getting generated and also variety. Earlier it used to be like I'm going to just uh, do the reporting on a table, a data, whatever, right? Now I want to process the images. Okay, I want to process the videos. I want to process XML files, JSON files. I will talk in depth about how these files looks like when we learn uh, the data engineering stuff. But yeah, so we are talking about different varieties of data. To deal with this, database is not good place. So how to deal with this, right? I want to handle large volumes of data, velocity of data and variety of data, how to deal with this. That's when people introduce the big data tools. Big data, a term it's a problem actually big data is large amounts of data and how you're going to solve is using a tool that's a big data tools right so abnisho was first of a kind right which deals with the big data okay but abnisho is very very costly Abnisha is very, very costly. So over a period of time, people found out open source. What do I mean by open source? So you are going to, they are going to develop some technology. You're going to use it and then to solve your problems. So it is free. You can use a particular tools or technology for free. That's the open source. You are going to use it. That's when the Hadoop came into picture. Hadoop was used by many companies to deal with big data problems. Okay, so and again, Hadoop was used by many companies just uh, knowing that it will be another, they use kind of another ETL tool, which is, a, which is not a correct thing. So uh, that's why many companies, they were not able to actually show the return on investment. They have invested huge money but they were not able to um, <coughs> show the returns on whatever they invested. Slowly and gradually, Spark came into picture. Okay. This Spark, it actually is very good. It, it deals, uh, it allows you to code in different languages like Python, PySpark, Java, <coughs> Scala, SQL. Okay. The moment they introduced SQL and Spark, it became a super hit and most of the people now are trying to use the Spark. Okay, to solve the big data problems, they are using the Spark to the very biggest extent possible because SQL is available over there. Okay, why SQL is very important? Because 80% of the 
of the data is structured data what do i mean by structured let's say you have a particular uh, excel sheet wherein you have this tables and columns defined this is the structured data okay whenever i write something over here this is unstructured data this is just text i am writing or anywhere that I, that is uh, that i feel is <laughs> fine so this is unstructured data structured data is like data in excel sheet data in a csv file data in a table everywhere that is the structured data so 80% of the data is structured we can use sql to solve these data problems so why do i need a hadoop why do i need a spark let's say a man can work 10 hours a day a day to solve a problem okay now if he can work 10 hours a day to solve a problem now my boss comes and says can you finish it in one hour so if i have to finish it in one hour is that possible like even if i work uh, like uh, 10 hours a day let's say i try to work maybe 15 hours a day but that is not possible i may take end up doing it in 7.5 days because i need rest right so like that there is a limit on what a machine let's say if you take your machine there is a limit on how much cpu how much memory a particular um, <coughs> computer can have actually so these are all like cpu memory disk and network this becomes your this is called as a compute okay we'll understand more about it later but i'm just giving you um, an example over here okay so there is a limit actually that it, it cannot go uh, beyond a certain limit so what i should supposed to do then i need to bring in 10 people to finish the work in one day so what i'm doing here i'm distributing the load i'm sharing the load with other people so that it will <coughs> solve the problem quickly it will solve the problem quickly so that's why we are talking about spark we are talking about hadoop this is mainly for distributed computing This is mainly for distributed computing okay so that will be used for distributed computing and so let's say in this course okay i'm going to teach python basics okay why i'm talking about the basics of python python is a vast subject wherein you can use for mobile development application development data engineering data science data analysis everything so I'm going to mainly target about how to use it for data engineering stuff because PySpark is easy to learn nowadays, but you need to know, okay, uh, basics of Python and how to do, what to do and all. So I'm going to teach Python basics, okay, <clears throat> uh, for first uh, two to three days maximum. And then I'll be jumping into the Spark SQL post post spark sql i am going to talk mainly about the pyspark so while learning about the pyspark i will talk about what is big data i will talk about uh, like how it evolved and then i will talk about what are the things that we need to learn in the pyspark uh, to make our uh, daily job easy okay and then <clears throat> over a period of time as i was talking about we were <clears throat> we are using still actually databases to load the data but it is not sufficient because databases is very costly so what we need to use we need to store the data data in file system like let's say my computer i have the uh, <coughs> this particular uh, three folders i want to store it store the data in this particular folder store the data in the file system okay so when i have a database wherein it supports a lot of uh, like crude properties create read update and delete but file system don't support them so there is a company called linux foundation wherein <clears throat> they introduced a new format called delta format okay this delta format supports okay insertion of the data 
updation of the data and also deletion of the data okay so this is very important for any data engineer <coughs> actually so that is called the that is the delta format that's a delta format we'll learn we'll deep dive into delta format because delta format supports uh, supports a lot of things like version control of the data there could be a lot of new things that you will be hearing today please don't worry about it i will cover in depth of each of this subject but today it's going to be really um, if at all if you don't have uh, any background about uh, <coughs> like uh, new uh, technologies definitely it look, it's going to be a little bit um, uh, tough for you to understand but i will make sure you will understand everything in depth okay version control and then you can do a time travel of the data <coughs> okay and then you can also restore from previous versions of the data <coughs> so this is really helpful in the modern data era so delta format we are going to learn about the delta also we are going to i will talk uh, more about azure cloud okay um, what all things that is important in the azure cloud and uh, different storage types like databases data lakes and blob storage i will give side by side comparison of all of those so that you will have a in depth knowledge of it and then will also talk about the data factory right <clears throat> data factory is a no code or low code etl tool just like uh, ssis informatica abnicio all these are no code low code etl tools so data factory is a no code etl tool on the <coughs> azure cloud on the azure cloud lot of people lot of companies just use data factory for the data engineering work and we will also learn about the data factory in this course okay we'll also learn about synapse it's a cloud cloud data warehouse and also microsoft recently introduced a new tool fabric okay i will also talk about it i will show because if you learn all of this that i told about then it will be easy for you to understand the fabric but i will show what all things are available in the fabric and it will help you for <clears throat> like i think microsoft is going this way since i'm teaching the microsoft uh, tools so it will be good to learn about the fabric as well coming to the data bricks okay i will be using uh, data bricks to teach uh, python pyspark and spark sql okay i am going to provide you free for life <coughs> access to this tool i will talk more about it um during first day of our class okay but you may need azure portal <coughs> actually you if you have not used the azure portal access i will also uh, show that how to use you will have a 30 days <coughs> free and um, you can use that i will i will show you how to uh, make use of it from the azure but for pyspark python and spark sql you will use the databricks uh, and it will be free for life i will show you how to do that and apart from that right who this course will be suitable for this course will be suitable for university students if at all if they would like to learn this course will be suitable for any it developers like most of uh, my students uh, actually like uh, they were from uh, testing background they were from development background uh, they want to change it to data engineering because data is the new oil lot of opportunities are there in the data now lot of companies are migrating from on premise to cloud so whether that will be uh, so it will be very beneficial for them if at all if they would like to uh, if they learn this and also you are a aws engineer gcp engineer or on premise um, data engineer it is suitable for you and it is also suitable for data architects um, actually and uh, some of the project managers maybe um, like during uh, my teaching i observed at least one project manager uh, or a technical manager joining my course uh, so that they will get a understanding because nowadays just 
knowing the project management is not sufficient having a technical knowledge to speak in the technical terms with the uh, colleagues will be really important so i understood from them that is important so uh, i'm adding them also uh, like it will be helpful for them as well okay so do you uh, i am going to teach starting from the basics right i told i am going to teach about python spark sql okay so this will and also pyspark so everything will be covered and every day i am going to uh, provide you pdfs and also i am going to provide you the notebooks i am going to just show uh, the notebooks that i have so that you will get a idea on how to use it so you are going to receive a lot of notebooks like this i am going to help you to create in the very first class i am going to help you to create this workspace and uh, you are going to use them actually so i am going to provide this notebooks i am going to teach you how to use and all those stuff okay so <clears throat> this is about it and i am going to talk little bit <clears throat> in the last and then i will let you ask me questions so in the case of modern data platform i know uh, like as i told you it will be little difficult for you to understand everything in the very first uh, demo class but i'll make sure you get confidence you get um, a, like uh, you have to practice right like one hour of we know teaching minimum requires two hours of practice if you are coming from any other background if you are a non it background or something you may need 3 hours okay i don't want to uh, just give you a false uh, uh, indication over here that you will be able to do it if you do my course you must practice like a trainer can just uh, prepare the food and keep it in front of you eating the food is up to you you have to definitely put efforts and um, learning then only you will be very successful otherwise you will not be um this this is for sure this is not only for this course this is for any course you must be uh, spending lot of time okay so this is i would say you have to spend it uh, like i would say if you spend it for around 2 months um then it will be really helpful there was one student who was a tester before and then he learned devops he didn't find it was uh, very helpful for him so he learned again data engineering now he is a data engineer so he transformed look at uh, the way he tuned himself he wanted he was a tester and then he was a devops engineer and he became a data engineer right now so it was uh, he did uh, put effort i did put my efforts he did put his efforts so that it will be easy so along with this i will also be providing you um, <laughs> like uh, sample resumes anonymous and also i'll be providing you interview questions and answers if at all if anybody is looking for targeting interviews and everything i'm going to provide those also and uh, you can every day after the class um, i would spend time um, i would encourage people uh, to ask me questions uh, so that i can answer you um, every day i'm going to take one hour of class okay and it will be only week days five days a week and i will let you know the timings it will be either 7 am or 7:30 am every day in the morning and five days a week and i would need around 6 to 7 weeks um uh, of time to complete this particular course so i would i would spend one hour on the teaching i would spend like 15 minutes to 30 minutes um on clarifying the doubts actually okay so this is this is what it is and uh, now i'll be open for questions if anybody would like to ask any kind of question please ask me hello anybody got any questions please ask me so that uh, i can clarify
Uh, Reddy, uh, good morning. Uh, I have one question. Yeah. Uh, uh, here, uh, see, there are some, uh, uh, I, you know, heard about some tools like an Oracle have some BI tool like uh, Oracle Business Intelligence. Yes. Hyperion, you know, yeah. some similar CRM tools. Yes. Uh, they do some analytics also. Yeah. Right? So, uh, are these, uh, they are also similar uh, uh, processing do what the, these data engineer uh, tools which you are you know mentioning or they are different completely so oracle actually what they are doing is they will offer a data warehouse actually uh, but what we need to think about is this is just data related to a particular ERP or a CRM because th those are the applications that Oracle provide right now or a HRM application, right? Okay. But as a, um, a like a data engineer, you would need data of all the sources, not only a ERP or a CRM, like you have a finance application, you have a customer facing application, you have a lot of applications, let's say there would be around minimum of 20 applications in an organization. So what you would do apart from this Oracle, like if they are providing it's well and good, we can definitely use them. But if you want to cross join or integrate the data from multiple sources, you would need, you would need modern data tools actually. So apart from this, uh, like uh, this uh, cloud data platforms that we're talking about, because if you could see, that uh, let's say when Hadoop was introduced or any Oracle tool was introduced, right? So those things actually they charge not for life. Hello. So those those guys will ask you to buy an enterprise license or user based license and they keep charging. But when it comes to cloud, it will be just a pay as you go. Like if you use the service, then you are going to pay. Otherwise, you would not be paying. So that way for integrating the data from different applications into one particular locations. So this will be useful. Yeah, definitely Oracle can do uh, the job for you, but it will be only for the Oracle sources, not for all the source. Thanks. Yeah, yeah hi, Vinod Vijay. Yeah. Hi, Vijay. Yeah, hi. Uh, as you told, like, there are like uh, more than 20 applications and all those things, okay? Yes. So generally, like, uh, there are some applications will be hosted on the uh, AWS or some uh, applications are hosted on the Azure itself and some application may be hosted on the, like, uh, on-premises itself, okay? Yes. Generally, this data to move to all the AWS on the, like, ADLS you told, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So what are the different methods to connect those data and how to transfer that one? Okay, so whenever we talk about uh, reading data from uh, different uh, cloud tools, so if you take uh, Azure Data Factory, right? This got uh, adapters like connection adapters. All yeah, you yeah, need yeah. is the user ID and password actually. So you can uh, get the data. So Azure Data Factory plays very important role over here. Wherein, so instead of saying the data movement, we'll call it as a copy activity. Okay, there is AG something called as a copy activity. Yeah, AG so, copy. Yes, AZ copy is uh, is also good, but um, copy activity in the case of ADF is also um, very okay. important. Okay, or else you can use uh, programming like PySpark um, <clears throat> because ADF is a uh, actually serverless engine. So if you want to know the defined capacity to do the work in a defined way, you would need a PySpark tool solve these problems so you can easily connect using the PySpark as well all you need to do is uh, mounting them in uh, databricks and use and how about the like real-time data sync to the like uh, to adf or uh, adls so real-time data sync in the case of uh, azure data factory there is uh, something called as a event-based triggers Wherein, whenever there is an event happened, whenever there is a, 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 like data is getting uh, generated, you can use this event-based triggers or else you can use read stream and write stream of data. So these are the like services provided by Azure itself or? 
So, read stream, write stream is provided uh, as part of PySparf. Event-based triggers is provided by uh, Azure itself. Okay. There is a event hub um, actually wherein you can store uh, the data. It's just like, let's say, whenever somebody is generating the data continuously from a particular source, right? So, let's say you are generating the data and there is, you want to load the data. This is a source. I'll just... Right. This is a source, and this is the target. Mm. So now you can read the source uh, because the data is getting generated uh, continuously. You can directly load the data. People think of doing this, but sometimes if your target application is down, there is a uh, there is some problem or whatever, right? So that would actually you may lose some data. So that's why we get a um, like message queue or a message broker like Kafka or yeah, event Kafka, hubs, yeah. right? Event hubs. Uh, these guys will have, if there is a one active server, one passive server, these kinds of things they will handle. Even if there is a failure, they will have a higher level and everything. So the data from source will be moved to Kafka. From Kafka, you're going to read in the in any kind of a form like a Azure Data Factory or uh, data breaks, you will be moving the data from this uh, message queues, actually. So we can, uh, like, I would try to explain, we may not be able to uh, use the Kafka or event hubs, but I will uh, try to do the data simulation, like continuously generating the data and how it works with the read stream and write stream. I will show that, actually, while doing. Yeah. No, thank you. But this will be just Kafka and event hubs. I will be providing the notebooks which I worked on in the past for sampling so that it will be all you are going to do is how you are going to connect to Kafka and reading. It's just like uh, I like there is in Spark things are very simplified like Spark dot read stream write stream as I told. So uh, I would be providing those notebooks which will be useful for you. Yeah. Okay. Bro. Anybody else got any questions? Please ask me. So before somebody asks some question, I will I will try to explain the synapse thing, why it is important. Synapse is a cloud data warehouse of Microsoft. Okay, it is similar to Snowflake, Amazon Redshift, and also Google's BigQuery. So it is similar to them. Um, these are a cloud data warehouse, which, which again um, uses the distributed computing and storing of the data, which is very powerful. And you will, uh, like in the real time, if, it, if you are doing things, you will be able to understand um, how these things will be helpful. So uh, this is one more thing. In the Synapse, we also got something called as a, uh, like external tables, polybase. So polybase is nothing but a database stores the data, data, we, along with the table which have a full control but polybase is you will have a metadata but data stored in a separate file right so this is again a, uh, this playing a very crucial role for um, smaller organizations and also for data science use cases okay so this this is really really helpful because Whenever you are doing a data science use cases, they want to do data exploration. So you mean you don't need to um, actually use a compute uh, actually. So you may we will end up paying the data money all the time. So you will use the serverless engine wherein you will just pay for the amount of data that you need. Right? So for that, this will be really useful. So this will also be covered as part of the course, these two things, and uh, that will be useful for you.
I will be providing the PDFs for every uh, topic that I cover so that it will be helpful for you to glance through um, and also practice notebooks will be provided. I would request uh, if at all if you are really interested, uh, if I am able to generate interest in you, if you would like to join then you have to practice this uh, for um, <clears throat> like to uh, to get to be master in that actually. So. And by the way, the course fees will be uh, 20k. Uh, I will be charging 20k as a course fees. Total duration, how many days do you know? It will be minimum of six weeks. Uh, actually, 30 hours is needed for me. Um, it may go beyond 30 hours because uh, sometimes some people uh, may, uh, because they may not have experience in these tools, they may uh, end up asking doubts, which is well and good because we all uh, teach further better. Betterment, so uh, I would end up like I may lean like um, overlap into seventh week also, actually. So a little over six weeks, I would say six weeks is uh, a minimum required for me. 30 plus hours. Yeah. Also, I would uh, give two projects. Uh, there are some assignments that I would give. I will also give two projects uh, for you to uh, understand uh, medallion architecture. I, I don't talk much about in the demo, but uh, about the medallion architecture and how to do end to end, like uh, from data factory, uh, how we are going to connect to data breaks and how uh, it works. So all these things uh, in the real time, how we're going to do this, uh, like incremental load, full load, SCD type tools, these things will be covered uh, also. Um, so this, if you do the, uh, do these two projects, which many people has done, uh, we have done this like they, uh, most of the doubts that they have got cleared and they got confidence to uh, actually directly work on the real time project. So. I would uh, strongly encourage people to uh, work on these two projects uh, if at all if you wish to join this particular course. I will be providing uh, one of the projects I will be taking around two hours to three hours to explain but one I would let you uh, explore while doing the courses. Any more questions anybody having this? I'll be starting the course uh, probably from Monday. Uh, I'll inform you. Please uh, ping me if you are interested. Um, if you are interested uh, actually, so please ping me and uh, I will uh, make a group and add you to the group and uh, further communication will be done as part of that group and you, you, you will start learning actually from under. So you can ping me or on this number um, actually in the WhatsApp so that I will add you to the group. Uh, ready. Uh, one yes. of uh, friend did not join. She, okay. if she want to, you know, listen this demo. Uh, is there a way uh, for? Uh, I will listen? upload. Uh, uh -huh. I will upload this uh, to YouTube, um, and they can listen. I will share the link to you. Please ping me uh, after this class. I will definitely share the link so that she can do. Sure. Sure. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Any more questions anybody having, please ask me.
okay guys if uh, there are no more questions um i'm really thankful for all of you for joining this particular demo and i kept it short uh, otherwise it will be uh, uh, like if at all if it is not suitable for you may end up um, it will be boring so that's why i kept it short i will uh, walk you through again um, because uh, there is a lot of course content and everything that i have to walk through um, i will be sharing um, that also with all of you guys and then you can just i will just share the course content one last time and then i'll finish this okay this is going to be a detailed course content actually that i have uh, prepared so everything that we're going to learn these are the things that you're going to learn and in each of them what are you going to learn how is also provided over here okay so i'll be sharing this uh, with all of you uh, just ping me if you are interested i'll share this with you and you can just go through uh, there is my youtube channel if at all if you'd like to just go through for any sometimes i upload some videos uh, so you can just go through with you. thank you reddy thank you thank you guys and, thanks uh, Anil. thank you good luck and, and bye for the day thank you Vinod. thank you Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.